Eritrea had a claim that Ethiopia violated the uh, Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations by its treatment of the embassy driver. So everybody in the Eritrean embassy had been considered persona non grata and expelled except the driver. He's still living in the embassy and he's driving around. He's the only Eritrean in Addis Ababa. Okay? And so the allegation goes, with all these really serious allegations, this, this one makes it to trial. This is one that makes it to trial. And these other ones are worth 10, 20, 30 million dollars and so forth. He's pulled over by the Ethiopian police who um, whack him in the mouth with the butt of a pistol, breaking a tooth, and then he's um, hauled away to the sixth prison uh, where he's kept for six months before and tortured before being taken to the Red Cross at the frontier. Okay? Eritrea wants to do this live. It could do it all on papers. So I said, well, I'll take that part of the trial. And David and I are you know, dividing this stuff up. So this witness, you know, so whenever I'm in charge of our day in court or what have you, I'm, I've got the most prominent seat, you know, right by the aisle in the front row. The judges are all right there. And on my right is the legal counsel for Ethiopia, you know, the It'd be like the um, legal advisor to our State Department and umpteen other people and everything else. And here's the podium where you stand and talk. And I can practically reach the Eritrean chief counsel. And I've prepared my cross-examination. I mean, you know, I mean, this, uh, we, we've denied that anything of this sort happened. And this is complicated because the guy spoke only Tigrinia, Tigrinian, and it has to be translated into Amharic and into English, the official language of this particular court. And I'm thinking, he does have a chipped tooth, see? As I, I'm getting up to cross-examine him, right? My Perry Mason best, my client, the legal advisor to the foreign ministry, hands me a note, handwritten note. He's lying. He was taken to the third police station, not the sixth. And I knew I never wanted to lose that piece of paper. I'm just stunned. You said nothing of the sort happened. The only thing the guy's got wrong is which police station he was taken to. And do you blame him? But I got to go through some kind of cross-examination. So what would you do? I, I think what I did was I... Uh, one of the American judges, you, you, you actually chit-chat with the judges if you want to or if they want to during breaks and so forth. And one of them was George Aldrich, who's probably the foremost authority in the world on the law of war, an American. He had been um, Kissinger's right-hand man during the Paris peace talks to end the Vietnam War. And he was the one that I knew best. Lucy Campbell was there and the three others were uh, not Americans. And I gave, I just shot Aldrich a look. And I think he saw this, I'm being handed this note. And so I go through a cross-examination where I'm just trying to poke, how could you, how could you possibly remember this? And to, 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 I mean, not in a hostile way, but very, very respectful, but just uh, going through the motions. And then the almost harder part was you know, a couple of weeks later when it's time for closing argument, and I have to address this. And we've said the guy in, in papers that the fellow was lying. I know damn well that 99% of the story was true. That's what that note means. That note is framed and in, in my office, too. I'll have to show that to you or take a picture of it. I've never lost that. And... Uh, 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 I, I don't know quite how I muddled through, but I did not make a strenuous argument that that witness lied. I just tried to address it briefly and move on, and they found that he, he indeed had been maltreated and that it was a violation of the Diplomatic Relations Convention. But so I, uh, I've used that in a poem. But talk about truth being the first casualty of war. You can't even tell your own lawyer what really happened.